This is Dan from Christie's RV. Today we're going to be taking a look at this uh, used 2012 J-Flight uh, 29 QBH. We're going to go over some of the stuff you need to know after you purchase this unit. Start on the front. First off, you have your power tongue jack. Um, so you get a couple switches on the front. One's for the hitch up light. The other is to extend and retract. It does have a uh, manual crank in the front compartment. If for some reason the jack didn't work, the manual crank just comes on here and you would crank it on your own. Behind that, you have your uh, two 30 pound propane tanks. Uh, in the center is a crossover regulator. This is intended to be used with both bottles open. Then whichever bottle that this lever is pointing towards is the one it's gonna draw from. When that becomes empty, the little gauge here on top will go from green to red, but automatically draw propane from the other tank. When you notice that it's red, you just need to switch the lever over to the other side, and then it'll go green because there'll be propane there, and then you can have the other bottle uh, filled. Behind that, you have your battery. There's a fuse holder here for your main fuse. Now on the side of the unit, you have your water heater. To open the water heater, you just have to turn the little clip, hold it down. Uh, everything's controlled from inside the unit. The only thing you may have to do here is to pull the fresh, or the, sorry, the hot water heater drain plug. Uh, before you pull that drain plug, you need to bleed some pressure out of the system. So you need to open up a set of taps inside, and then you can safely remove that. You got your outside shower. Uh, here you have your two water connections. So the one is if you're are for normal hookup with the hose. The other one is the black tank sprayer. So the toilet tank has a sprayer inside of it. So you can hook the water up to there to help clean the inside of the tank out. Um, it needs to be done with the sewer hose on and the valve in the open position so you don't overfill the tank. Below that you have your power cord. It just pulls out and pushes back in. There's about 20 feet of cord. Underneath that you have your sewer hookup. So there's a brand new sewer hose in the back bumper. Uh, so you just twist the cap off, twist the hose on, then you have your dump valve handles. So you got one here, which is your black tank. You just pull out on that to open it. Black tank's the toilet. In front of the tires, you have the gray tank. Uh, gray tank's all the sinks and showers. On the back corner, you have your cable and satellite input. So if you have cable or satellite, that's where you hook it up. So on the door side at the back, you have a hole in the side for your spare tire crank. Uh, it uses the same handle as the stabilizer jacks. Your fridge compartment, everything's controlled from inside. So it's really only for service and airflow. You can't lean up anything against the trailer to impede airflow uh, in the vents. Otherwise it affects cooling performance of the fridge. This here is where you fill your fresh water tank. So you just take the cap off and put the hose in. Once it's full, it starts draining out underneath. Now underneath the trailer, it has two white valves. Those are your drains for your fresh tank. Now the awning on this unit is electric. So to open the awning, you just go inside, open up this cover. And then you're just going to press and hold the out button. Now electric awnings are not intended to be used if it has heavy rain or heavy wind. So you'll need to put it in. As well as I'd recommend if you're not at your trailer to roll it up. Now they do have some adjustment on the arms, both front and back. To adjust it, you're just going to loosen the knob off here. Push the arm down, tighten up to where your desired is. Before you retract the awning, you need to loosen it up so it goes back to the fully extended position. And then just press and hold the button to roll it in. So in the same compartment, you have your monitor panel. 
So the monitor panel can tell you your battery, fresh tank, black and gray tank levels. So to operate it, you're just gonna press it. They share the same gauge up on the top. Then you have your water pump switch. So if you want to use your water pump, you're just turning it on. You have your two water heater selections, gas or electric. Electric, you just turn the button on. Gas, you flip it on. If for some reason it does not light, this little fault light up top is gonna to come on. Below that, you have your two light switches, the exterior light and the interior lights. And then you have your slide out switch. So to run the slide out, you're just gonna press and hold the button. So one thing to note with the slide out is before you extend it, you need to make sure that nothing's fallen down beside or on top of the slide out, otherwise it can cause damage. Another thing is that the slide out only seals all the way out or all the way in. So if you leave it part way, it may leak. When it gets all the way out, it makes that ratcheting noise. It's how you know you are made it all the way to the end. So on the side of the kitchen cupboard down here, you have your propane and CO detector. That's wired straight to the battery on the trailer. If the battery on the trailer becomes low, it emits a high pitched squeal uh, to tell you that it's not gonna work properly. If the alarm does go off, the corresponding light lights up to tell you if it's detecting propane leak or carbon monoxide. So here you have your switches for your above the stove light and the fan. To light the stove top, you're just gonna pick which burner you want on, turn it to light, turn the sparker. Now the center burner is your high output burner. So if you're going to um, boil water or something like that, you'd want to use the center one. For the oven, to light the oven, you just have to turn the knob till it goes to pilot. Once it's to pilot, you can push in on the knob. You're going to push in on the knob. And then you light the pilot from underneath. Once it's lit, you're going to hold, continue to hold the button for 5 to 10 seconds. When you release it, the pilot will stay on. Then you can turn it to whatever temperature you want. Below the stove, you have your load center. Open it up, you're just gonna push here in the center and it pops open. Now everything's labeled on the door for the fuses and breakers. One thing to note is that the breakers don't have a indicator to say they're tripped. So if you're having a power problem, you just need to find the right breaker and turn it off and back on to reset. The fridge controls in this unit are just in the center here. So your choices are auto, off, or gas. Gas is propane only. If it does not light on gas on its own, this orange light's gonna start flashing at you. Uh, if you select auto, it's gonna use electricity as long as it's present and switch to gas if it's not. So if you were plugged in uh, and the fridge was on, the power went out, it would switch to propane. As soon as the power is reintroduced, it's gonna switch back to electric on its own. And then you just have your temperature setting here, which is the same, or it's the temperature temperature setting both for the fridge and freezer. Next, you have your thermostat here. So the thermostat controls both the air conditioning and heat. So you will set whatever temperature you want, and then choose what you want uh, it to do. So you can do cool, which is the air conditioning uh, fan, which is just the air conditioning fan to help circulate the air. Or heat so you select heat the furnace is going to come on it's going to run for 15 20 seconds and then light on its own um, and then when it comes up to the temperature or you shut it off it's going to run for that 15 to 20 seconds with the flame off as a cool down procedure so the other switch on here is uh, says it's auto or on those are your fan controls for the air conditioner. So the difference between auto and on, auto is going to uh, turn both the air compressor and fan off on the air conditioner when it gets the temperature. On, the fan will stay running all the time. And then you just have your high or low fan, whichever one you desire. Uh, one thing I do recommend, if it is very warm outside and you're running the air conditioner, is to always run it on high fan. Otherwise, it can cause the air conditioner to freeze up.
So on the wall in the bathroom is your GFI receptacle. So that GFI receptacle controls all the uh, receptacles that are in a wet location. So if the GFI trips, uh, you just need to reset it from that control in the bathroom. The toilet in this trailer is foot flush. So to add water to the bowl, you just half step on the pedal. To flush the toilet, you step on it all the way. Behind this cover, um, behind the bathroom door, is where your water heater is located. Uh, it does have winterizing bypasses on the back. And you just have to take the couple screws out to gain access to that. I think that's just about all with this unit. I hope you enjoy and have a great day.